come back to the second part of the lecture number 13. So, we have been discussing about heat treatments. So, I talked about normal heat treatment then I started discussing about the case hardening which is very widely used heat treatment process for gears. And as you know I told you a gears undergo lot of wear and tear during their fast motion whether it is a spar gear or a bevel gear or a rack and pinion these are widely used things in the automobile industry and many others. How to take care of that? Well, I shown you this particular view gap in the last lecture that many cases the tooth failed or it has been worn out you can see here or you can have even internal crack on the surface. So, that is the typical failures we observe during operation. How to take care of that? Well, there are three processes which can be adopted. They all call case hardening. One is the case carburizing, nitriding or carbonitriding. These are part of the heat treatment process after the gear is machined out or produced by casting. Correct, it can be done. It will be given a final shape and then it is done. So, what is the carburizing process? It is nothing but adding carbon to the surface and this is simply done by exposing the part to the carbon rich environment. How it is done? It is done simply by putting this gears into a furnace heated up to high temperature and then some gas carbonaceous gas like methane is burnt. So, that lot of carbon monoxide is produced and this carbon monoxide at high temperature can easily diffuse inside the steel and this will lead to extra carbon into the steel or the surface of the steel. So, first you heat this gears at 800 to 950 degrees Celsius temperature, then you burn some carbonaceous gas like I told you methane, you know ethylene, butane in oxygen. If you burn that it will produce CO and water, water anyway is going to evaporate away. This CO then can diffuse inside or this CO can dissociate to produce CO2 and carbon and then carbon from further diffuse inside these surfaces of these uh, teeth of the gear and produce extra cementite. And as you know cementite is a very hard, so therefore it can produce hard teeth. This is one of the carburizing process so what is called conveyor, conveyor hard carbonite sorry this is carbo uh, dyeing or carbonite riding both can be done here. So, you can see the components are put in a conveyor belt and then you can actually have a carbonizing gas or you can burn ammonia also. Ammonia is going to produce nitrogen right. So, both CO and nitrogen oxide can fill this area and then they can dissociate to produce carbon and nitrogen which will diffuse into this surface of the steel and produce a rich carbon and nitrogen rich layer. So, if you do not burn ammonia simply burn carburizing gas it will be carbonitriding or carburizing ok. If you burn together it will be carbonitriding and then finally, it is quenched or by a natural gas or you can quench in water also depending on your requirement. So, this is how actually this is systematic process adopted by many industries to produce this. So, here there are many variables right temperature, gas concentration and your quenching rate, component size, surface area these are the variables or features which will be used if you want to model this process. And you know carburizing can be gas carburizing, plasma carburizing salt bath also or pack carburizing possible also. So, there are different processes available I will not go into details of that one I discussed is basically gas carburizing one can actually use plasma to carburize also and you can also use a salt bath containing carbon salt carbon rich species and you can pack it also. So, I want to show you how this is a cut section of the gear you can see there is a thin layer here you can see that there is a thin layer right that is the carbon rich layer is a hard layer which is put in the surface of these uh, gears and then it will create a very hard this layers. Nitriding is basically done by salt bath or it can be done by plasma nitriding. So, as you know salt bath is basically require you sodium cyanide which is very dangerous that is why nowadays it is not used because environmentally this is not uh, very environmentally benign process this is basically can generate a lot of gases cyanide gases poisonous. So, therefore, this is discarded. Instead what is done is basically you can have a plasma and nitrogen plasma basically can be created inside a chamber and this is this plasma is then subjected the work which is subject to the by the plasma which will allow this uh, 
nitrogen to implant it getting implanted inside this inside this uh, gears finally nitrogen will be forming compound with iron like fe4 n fe3 n and they actually make the surface harder other than that we can also do induction hardening what is induction hardening very simple if i take compound like this only talked about magnetic field right and then component is placed inside a induction coil now you apply huge current rare frequency current rf okay megahertz or kilohertz current frequency current so this will heat up the surface of the object just like induction melting and once it is heated up you can simply leave this object into a water and it will be quenched into water it will form martensite in the surface right because you are only heating up on the surface you are not heating up inside induction will not heat up the whole sample it will heat only the surface you can see that this all the gears top surface of the gears are heated up in this picture and, and then it is quenched this can also produce hard layers for the surface well there are few other hardening mechanisms and uh, one is called precipitation hardening i think i have talked about little bit in the some of the lectures earlier so it is used for aluminum and copper alloys all of you know that body of the plane is basically made of aluminum copper alloy right aluminum copper alloy is used for to make this aluminum 4.5 volt percent copper this is nothing but duralumin dur aluminum okay so this is particular alloy actually get hardened by the formation of precipitates that is why this body of the plane is made by this kind of material so whether it is a fuselage or whether it is a you know wing or whether it is a horizontal stabilizers wing everything made of that so here again i am talking about a phase diagram between aluminum and copper okay this will be copper and this is left side is aluminum and this is the temperature so as you clearly see if i take an alloy composition c heated up to temperature ts i form a single phase kappa and then if i quench it it will form super saturated solid solution of that quenching means it will not allow any any kind of solids or copper to go out and finally if i heat it up this super saturated solid solution to a temperature called tp and then i can form precipitates right because precipitates will be theta because at this temperature precipitate phases are basically kappa plus theta so aluminum copper alloy theta is basically nothing but al to cu so it's basically aluminum solute solution alpha aluminum plus al to cu which is nothing but theta and if it's heated when it's like this you heat it up to ts temperature and then keep it for some time to keep it for some time to solidize then you quench to form super saturated solute solution and finally heat it up to intermediate temperature for some time to form the precipitates don't change any shape of the compound anything as you clearly see here how the precipitates formed i uh, can see this is the kappa phase and if you quench you form a such super solute solutions finally when you age it it form this kind of precipitates inside these are the precipitates you see this is a typical precipitation process adopted for this kind of alloy systems it is shown in a much better way here you can clearly see that kappa and theta theta can form as a big precipitate or like it can also form at equilibrium condition basically but normally we don't uh, do these things at equilibrium we quench it at low temperature and then allow these precipitates to form inside as a fine particles to strengthen the material this is some of the pictures of that you can clearly see this is basically alpha aluminum grain in which these precipitates are present shown by this white array arrow or red arrow you don't have any precipitates near the boundaries because all the solutes are basically taken away from the boundary to form this precipitate solutes means copper therefore if i plot strength versus time this is strength basically on the y axis this is strength and you can clearly see the tensile strength hardness the increases as you increase the time and then reaches a peak value then further decreases so this is called peakage okay peakage and this is called overage depending on your requirement you can actually have different kinds of properties possible that's how the precipitation hardening is done uh, my purpose was to let you know that there's a process exists called precipitation hardening now we can know what are the variables right time temperature alloy chemistry 
quenching rate so many things are variable for this kind of processes. Well, now we will switch, switch gear we will talk about bulk deformation processes little bit in today's lecture and you know what is that process. Well, these are called metal forming processes correct. If I take a piece of metal piece of steel piece of aluminum or piece of whatever copper alloys and then I can deform it to give a different kind of shape. A deformation can be different types first you can do rolling operation which is shown here you can see here in the first picture which is nothing but a rolling right. You can also deform within a cavity that is called forging you can also use a die and push this so, uh, you know heated solid piece through the die that is called extrusion you can even use a die to form wires that is how the copper wires are made in the literature or in the industry you can also do sheet metal forming many components actually are used as a sheet metal. So, you can use a punch to form a cup you can use many other you can cut it you can shear it there are many possible exist, but the major ones are rolling forging and extrusion right. So, rolling is basically passing this hot pieces of the steel it can be cold pieces also between two rollers you can clearly see here they are rotating opposite directions and that can squeeze the steel reduce its thickness increase its width that is a very simple thing and forging is also very simple thing in which you can took a piece heated piece and put it between the die and apply some forces to deform it correct excess amount is taken as a flash and whatever remaining is forming a component. So, I do not want to discuss everything here, but you know metal forming is a large volume of literature what you should need to know is how metal forming operations are done what are the different variables and in terms of material behavior temperature standard sensitivity friction and lubrication that is what it is. So, these are nothing but a large group of manufacturing processes in which plastic deformation is used to change the shape of the work piece. And what is the tool use? The tool use is called die that applies stress that must exceed the yield strength of the metal, right? You have, you have seen the stress strength curve, right? You must remember what is yield strength. So, yield strength the material must be you have to apply stress greater than the yield strength of the material, and metal takes a shape which is determined by geometry of the die. So, depending on the geometry of the die, here you see this is getting extruded, it is forming a rod or a hollow shaped pipe also possible if you put a mandrel here or some kind of a piece inside this. So, the shape is determined by geometry of the die, but you need to apply stress which is much higher in the yield strength of the material. And you know obviously, they are characterized by significant deformation and the massive shape changes operation you could have seen a uh, couple of pictures I shown you that the massive shape change happens and they are called bulk because we use large work piece very low surface area to volume ratio. So, large work piece means very low surface area volume ratio and static works uh, starting work shapes include cylindrical billets or rectangular bars also. So, uh, we can classify these uh, things in many ways depending on the how the load is applied like one is called direct compression in forging you can directly apply compression force rolling also and uh, then you have an indirect compression process then you can have a tension type process like a bending a stage forming stage forming is basically a tension type process you can have bending operation possible like in case of uh, this sheet metal forming or you can have shearing you can cut pieces into two pieces also. So, this type of process applied to the work piece actually decide what kind of processes these are. Now, first one is a rolling process. So, what do you do here because this is what something you should know I take a we take a piece of work piece and put it between the two rolls rolls actually rotate in opposite directions and apply force also by putting this roll. So, you have a variable called temperature obviously, temperature is a variable here temperature force right strain is divided by the speed and also the lubrication. Okay, depending on that your surface thinness of the object will vary, but in case of forging what happens we take a piece put inside a cavity you can see here apply force here also variables are temperature force velocity which is nothing but a strain rate amount of deformation 
amount of plastic deformation as well as lubrication. There are many such variables present. Similarly, for extrusion, you need a die. As this is shown very nicely here. You can see here this is a billet, and you are pushing the billet by a ram through a die, and it is coming out. This is how the toothpaste tubes are produced here. And so, therefore, the die is basically has an orifice and it is going through. Huge amount of deformation is produced by that way. So, many variables temperature, force, the die, characteristic of a die, strain rate, strain everything is a variable here. So, you want us to consider all these things to, to study these kind of processes. Uh, you know in case of wire drawing or drawing basically uh, you have a such a kind of a die which is uh, wedge separate and work piece is pulled through this die basically by applying a force. So, therefore, this diameter is very important or thickness is very important for this purposes. So, now the many other process like sheet metal forming uh, these are the processes which related to metal sheets, strips or coils, they have high surface area to volume ratio as a starting material and often called press working because presses perform these operations. Parts are called stampings and tools are basically called punch and die. Let us see that this is one such operation right. You have put a work piece, apply force and it deformed right. You can see that it has deformed and you know this is called a as, you know, bending operation you have seen that. So, you are applying a bending force and here you are using a punch with certain force and velocity and the material is getting deformed. Remember, we are talking about processing parameters only, but there are many material parameters like the equations of this kind I discussed, equation of this kind. I hope you remember that right this material parameters will come into picture this is c actually constant and this is k. So, this is strain rate this is this is the flow curve that will also be used to model this kind of operations. This is basically deep drawing operation this is how the cups are produced if ding tick in a cup those cups are metallic cup they are produced by this operation. So, we take a simple sheet of metal and then heavily reform that by using a punch and the, you know this is a there is a blank holder which will hold this, but this is much complicated process can think about it. There are triaxial state of deformation which is not easy not easy to understand and at the beginning, but this process requires substantial understanding to model it is not easy to do that. Well, one can use shearing operation the one is shown here you can put a piece of metal sheet metal and then you push it down to, to cut it up it's shown here actually. When you cut it up you create a 45 degree angle you can clearly see they are here. So, blur will be produced this is very uh, very genuine things in the literature. So, let us stop here I think we have discussed a lot of different operations at the beginning in the next lecture we will talk about it some of the operations they are variables and some amount of understanding of these operations will be provided to you. But you know you need to read a lot if you want to model this kind of manufacturing processes using ML or DL and the best book to read is by George e. Dieter mechanical metallurgy. I refer it given this reference in some of the earlier lectures. So, please uh, look up those literature, but do not read too much because it is much intensive, but at least the processes if you want to model use th these processes by using machine learning of deal lining you need to understand the process otherwise you cannot do it that is what is my humble suggestion to you. So, please look into this literature and try to garner as much as knowledge possible. Thank you.